Okay. Oh, shit. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola. Oh, shit. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola 129. Welcome to the party, you guys. Is that camera in focus? I really hope so. Yes, you're completely right. That last rift sucked ass. That's why, <laughs> that's why I, I just wanted to finish off the song so I could record as well, basically. I'm sorry. Remember I told you guys that you deserve better? No. You don't. You destroy my shitty ribs. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. No, I was uh, I was a little bit in a hurry and I needed to finish off that song. So it became one of those. <laughs> You know, sometimes you just have to go to with the dudes and dudorinos. We have a lot to cover today. A lot to talk about. Holy shit. Let's start off with this. What is this, you might ask? Well, this is a completely new European-built solar guitar. And as you can see, it's a little bit different than a regular Type A guitar. This is the new Type AC, where the C stands for carved. Look at that. It's an even thinner body than before, an even sleeker looking design. It sports an Evertune bridge, a Swamp Ash body. You have Rich Life fretboard with stainless steel frets. You have locking tuners. You have our own hand wound solar pickups in there. It's just a, 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 an absolute beast of a guitar. And if we're lucky, maybe these guitars haven't been sold out already when this Sunday with Ola is airing, because they were released this past Friday. So, very limited, very cool. And now you think like, oh, you know, oh, that, okay, it's, it's time for the news, right? Because Ola usually talks about his bullshit guitars at first, and then, you know, he's just like wasting our time for five minutes and then start the news. No, we're not done yet. This past Friday, I also announced the Chug Project. What? What is this? The Chug Project? Oh, England, did the elder f***ing Edel crone? Oh, you know what? It might actually have been me that forgot to turn on the Edelkron. No, it's gone on. Okay, okay. Don't fault the Edelkron uh, manufacturer for this. I forgot to start it. But now it's stuck. It went down and then it got stuck. Oh! Oh, user error again. I forgot to... There it is! The win of the day right there. No, Chug Project. What is this, you might ask? This past Friday, I announced or released a video of a Chug Project. It was me playing a song. This actual guitar right there. I was playing this guitar. Uh, a, a song called Discord Shore. And the project name was The Chug Project Volume 1. And now you might ask, what is The Chug Project? And then my answer is... You know, every time you asked for me to release some of the Sunday with Ola <laughs> uh, riffs, but as songs. I've already done this sort of uh, with the Sunday with Ola. Uh, th it's already out on Spotify. You know, some, some, like the first Sunday with Ola riffs, they're out on Spotify already. But those are just, you know, the intros, like one minute bits, and then it just ends abruptly. So it's the riffs released just like they're uh, on Sunday with Ola. But with the Chug project, I take the ideas I get from the Sunday with Ola riffs and I make them into full songs. And it's something I'm gonna continue on doing every now and then. This new album, Volume 1, is now available for pre-order from my website in a bunch of different bundles and uh, variations. Uh, we have the Ultimate Bundle, which contains like a t-shirt, a vinyl, a CD, tab book, guitar pick, uh, what else? Assigned one of these. If you get one of these uh, bundles of the Chug Project, you also get one of these autograph cards with uh, me and Pix. And that's Pix as an Evangelion Unit uh, 01 
face right there. And that's me right there. Look at those muscles, man. Uh, maybe a little bit of false advertising right there or false marketing with the, the, the uh, buffness of the muscles and the arms right there. But it's a, it's a card that's autographed by me uh, that, that you also get in the bundle pre-order, okay? There will be more news on this coming, but as of right now, you can pre-order this album already. It will be out before summer. You know, at least. So we're, right now we're waiting for the vinyl samples, the CD samples. And as production of vinyls will come forth, I will uh, announce a release date for this album as well. So if you think that it's cool, maybe consider, you know, supporting what I do by getting the Chug Project Volume Number 1 album from oldanglandshop.com. That's it. Now I'm gonna shut up about it for a second, okay? Okay, you guys ready? How about those subscribers? I think I gained a subscriber because I started at 8.04 right there. So 8.06 right now. Let's check back later in this vlog. Okay, done news. Remember that riff? Meatball. Look at that! I'm not a subscriber. Thank you so much. Dear Lord and <laughs> dear Jesus, my savior. First piece of news. Gibson unveiled new Billy Joe Armstrong Les Paul Jr. complete with the pinkest hard case you've ever seen. The Green Day leader returns with a new single pickup, a Century Mile pack with a P90 and a none more pink protector case. Look at that. That's... Uh, I think that looks like a toy guitar. A little bit. I guess that is cool. Very bare bones. You have the one pickup and the pick guard and... Uh, volume and a tone and yeah, yeah, I guess that's cool. I, oh, that case though. Oh my god. Look at that. I'm ready to have sex in that case right now. Right now. However, not with this particular guitar because in, in all honesty, I think it's a little underwhelming. It looks like a toy guitar a little bit. It looks like the Guitar Hero guitar. No? You know. No? But is that only me? Very cool though. I love the case they made. Though uh, that looks sick. Look at that thing. I'm. Uh, I, I mean, that case alone will get you laid. Matt, get this case, okay? <laughs> All right. Dave Mustaine is saying a lot of things, and when Dave Mustaine speaks, I cover it in my Swola news because why not? Dave Mustaine is saying, "I'm a very advanced rhythm guitarist who can play complicated rhythms and sing over the top of them. Most people can't do that." The Megadeth main man discusses his forthcoming signature Gibson Les Paul for Fresh Guys. Uh, why Kiko Lurie is the band's best guitarist ever and succeeding, even though Metallica has always tried to hold me back. About the statement there that he, you know, he's he's a very advanced rhythm guitar player that can sing at the same time. I have to agree with him because playing intricate weird rhythm things and trying to sing at the same time, I think you need to have some sort of certain intelligence <laughs> or uh, to be over a special level to be able to do that or do more than one thing at the same time. I cannot do this. Like if I play something advanced on guitar, you know, I'm basically drooling. I forget to breathe. I, you know, my whole body just shuts off its functionalities <laughs> just to be able to play this intricate riff. So. I, I, I agree. He is very advanced. And, you know, he's he's definitely talented in that sense. I can't pull shit like this off. I'm probably just not smart enough. That's okay, too. Mustaine's habit of twisting trouble into triumph dates to being jettisoned by Metallica while on the precipice of success. Sentence, man. Not to be deterred, the red-haired Bell axe sunk his teeth into the opposition coming out on the other side of Fresh Metal Icon. Is this generated by chat GPT? When the shit hit the fan, I dug in. I didn't pussy out. I instilled a mindset into this band that we would not be deterred or effed with. We've always picked ourselves up of the deck and that... Uh, okay, this is the same story as always. Danny rambles on about, uh, you know, the current lion being a very pleasant people uh, to, to play in. So he seems to be in very good shape with Megadeth right now, where he has a bunch of uh, really awesome people playing with him. Or they're just very cooperative with him, you know, Dave Mustaine, and not complain about a lot of shit. And maybe, <laughs> you know... Uh, <laughs> See, if I had intelligence, I would be able to finish that sentence without, you know, me having to... Uh, <laughs> is there a picture of this new Les Paul he's talking about? Not to be seen. And that's the Kramer though. He's been using the Kramer guitar live now and it looks badass. I want to hear more about the Kramers. When can I order one? When can I get one? Okay, Davis Day. 
NCAA bans Virginia Tech from playing Metallica's Enter Sandman. Fans chant it anyways. What? Why would they ban something like this? The NCAA isn't allowing any music to be played in order to treat games like a neutral event. Basically meaning they don't want the home team to have more of an advantage than they already do. Oh, that's so freaking lame. Alright, well, well, let's watch it. That's actually pretty cool. How cool is that, that Metallica is so popular that an entire audience can sing the lyrics, basically. That's actually pretty cool, I must say. Another piece of Metallica news. James Hetfield called Kip Winger to apologize for Lars throwing darts at him in Nothing Else Matters video. Okay. <laughs> the best is the sound. Listen. <laughs> Alright, I don't know why he was doing this. It's featured in a Metallica Some Kind of Monsters pre-film opus, also where both Ulrich and vocalist guitarist James Hetfield are screaming, Die, Kip, Die. <laughs> Damn. Repeatedly as the darts keep flying. <laughs> but apparently at least one person felt bad about it, according to Kip Winger, where James Hetfield called him and apologized, basically. James Hetfield called me about a year and a half ago and apologized for the incident. James was really cool. James is the kind of guy I can totally be friends with, and he was very sincere. It wasn't like he was just called to apologize and then blow me off. He's actually texted me a few times. We text every now and then, and I don't think Lars would ever call me to apologize. There you go. James Hetfield, he can stand up for his mistakes. Lars Ulrich, not so much, maybe. Is it ego, or does he not even care? <laughs> well, I don't know. Okay, this piece of news hit me really hard, because it's been 23 years since reinventing the steel was released. What? If there's anything that makes me feel old, it's this. And that also means that it's been 23 years since I saw Pantera live. You know, back in the day. Holy shit! 23 years? That's ha that's like half my life ago. Reinventing the Steel was the first album where they didn't use Terry Date. Uh, you know, you had uh, a Chasm Hell, Vulgar Display, Far Beyond, and Great Sun Tranquil, where Terry Date was involved somehow. Uh, Reinventing the Steel was the first album where they did it all themselves. And I'm quoting Phil Anselmo here, who's saying, There was a new fire lit under my ass. Dimebag and I were pretty damn close on this one because I had a, uh, been a bit of a wreck before and when I showed up for jam sessions, I think Dime and the rest of the guys were psyched that I wasn't constantly frigged up. And Anselmo wasn't exactly sober during the entire process, but his commitment to Pantera was strong and the ly he lyrics he penned for songs like I'll Cast a Shadow and Will Grind That Axe for a Long Time were honest and visceral, revealing his pride in the band's accomplishment and his desire to defeat his demons. Which begs the question, I mean, I, he wasn't completely sober at all. I mean, I don't think Phil, uh, Phil sobered up like in the past five, six years, but back then he was still heavily drinking. I remember during the show that he was, he was not sober at all. <laughs> he was definitely not sober. Uh, so uh, even though he was probably, you know, not doing heroin and shit like that anymore, uh, he was still pretty effed up. And a sleeper song from this album that I truly enjoyed, that I thought was like a really breath of fresh air from Pantera, was the song It Makes Them Disappear, which is incredibly dark and heavy, even for a Pantera song, man. So if you didn't pay attention to that song, that's my little daily tip for you guys right now. It'll make him disappear. Check out that song. Remember last week I talked about rap news and the little Uzis and little uh, pajamases and shit like that? Well, now Lil Pump has released a heavy metal song and it's bad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to do right here, but that sucked ass. Yes. <laughs> Say what? I, I'm not even sure why I'm spending time on this one. That has to be the news, guys. Thank you so much. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. All right, just as I finish my swola. The postman arrived with this. <sighs> what can this be? Well, this right here is the vinyl pressing for the Chug project. So I'm gonna head into the other room and open it up. I'm extremely excited and curious about this. Look, that's the leaf on the floor. 
Are you taking pictures of a secret guitar? Yes. Okay. Secret. Good. Very exciting. Test prints, obviously, and you know that's uh, it's gonna be sick. Even the dog is happy. Look at this. Hey, yeah. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Okay. Enough cuddling. This is a new pressing plant we're working with too. So the last one took two years to deliver the last shipment. So uh, we had to find a new one. You know, this is the first time we're getting something from them. So I'm not sure what to think. Okay. Are you guys ready? Oh, okay. It's... <laughs> I don't know why, but I expected it to be the cover. But this is the test printing of the vinyl, okay? So, 001 right there. Okay, let's pop it into the vinyl player I got. Because I have no idea otherwise how to check if something is good or not. So, I got my vinyl player right there. All right. How exciting, man. I don't know which uh, side is which. Oh, it says here, Chago A. A right there, okay. So let's switch to... Okay. Crank the volume. Let's go, baby. All ready. There's audio. Very important, obviously, when you get a test pressing like this, is just to analyze the full album. You have to listen through it all and make sure there's no mistakes or anything like that, or any like weird glitches or stuff happening. So that's what I'm doing right now, just listening through the stuff, basically. So far, so good. It sounds sick. I was hoping a little bit that this would be the... Oh God, I got that. It's too loud. I have to turn it down. I was half expecting to get the sleeves as well. So you could have the printed sleeves. But this is just the test printing and they shipped it here. Uh, just basically for me to check so the vinyl master is working and it sounds spot on to be honest so <sighs> sounds pretty good man so just as a disclaimer, the Chug Project is not my solo album thing. It's a completely different project altogether. Basically, it is a celebration of the riff. I'm gonna continue to listen through the vinyl, check if there's any mistakes, and then I'm gonna give the go-ahead to the pressing plant. Extremely exciting, I must say. Back to Ola. Question of the day, where my beautiful YouTube members get to ask me a question on video, and I get to answer them. Today's question. What's up, Swole fans? Ola, my question is, what is your favorite Dimebag Daryl guitar riff? I'm not talking about a song. I'm talking about a riff. One riff that sticks out in your mind like, dude, I got to learn that. That is killer. Mine is probably regular people that that made me want to play guitar for hours. Anyway, I'd like to know what everyone's riff is, so comment down below so I can check it out in the comments. Uh, also, did you guys know Havoc is on tour this year? Oh, dude, I am stoked. Havoc is a killer band. Check them out if you haven't. Anyway, have a good Sunday, guys. Thank you so much for that question, and thank you for trying to steal my job. 
He's, <laughs> he's asking my, the, the people to comment on my video. So I, I don't have to say that anymore. I guess the, the members know what's, they, they know what's up. They're good people. Uh, great question. Favorite dime bag lick. So I guess I have to get uh, a dime bag guitar. Let's get this one, okay? Oh, shit. Uh, okay. Hello. <laughs> Uh, that was regular people. That's the riff that he liked the most. You know, for me personally, there's so many good Pantera riffs. I, I don't think I can name one, but I can probably name one that uh, I, it was my absolute favorite back in the day when I was starting to play guitar and I was listening to Cows of Hell and Vulgar Display of Power. And uh, that was the one of the riffs in This Love. You know, This Love, this song. <laughs> None of those riffs. There was a bridge riff that was really cool that went like this. Something like that. And that riff was like, oh, that was so above my level of guitar playing back in the day. So I, I sat down and really practiced uh, that riff. It's so fucking cool. Friggin' cool, sorry. Something like that. It's not that easy to play. <laughs> but I still, like, overall, I still think one of my favorite riffs, like, Mouth for War, you know. I mean, all those riffs back in the day where um, I, I hadn't really listened that much to Mel at all and then, you know, I heard all these sick riffs from Pantera. It, they were all just blowing me away. Good era, man, good era. You know, it, it's never gonna be the same as when you're a teenager and, you know, discovering music, man. That's... Yeah, that, that, that's sad about being an adult, uh, being old. You don't get the same excitement anymore. At least I'm not. But then I was really excited back then, at least. Uh, this guitar is cool, by the way. This is the uh, the Solar. <laughs> I've been. <sighs> I think I need a break. Uh, no, this is the Washburn Cross. This is not the Southern Cross. This is the Cross, which is the Indonesian version. Or is it Korea? I'm sorry, it's Korean made. And what number is it? It's 24 out of 100. It's been on the wall up there. I also have a Southern Cross. And I was actually thinking, I've been doing this a little bit for a couple of my YouTube members where, you know, I have so many Dimebag guitars and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should let go of some of them. Not all of them. Like, no, not not the uh, not the Stealth, not the Dimebolt. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. That, that one I, I sort of want to keep. But, and you know, the, the Southern Cross as well. It's also a shame that they're just hanging on the wall. And I know people out there would love to be able to play them, but also I know that the prices are completely insane. So maybe that's something I'm gonna do with this guitar is that, you know, I sell it for a non-scalping price. You know, a price that makes sense. I think these go for like five grand now. It's insane. It's an, you know, it's an import guitar. But, you know, they are becoming more and more rare. I'll have to think about that one. Thank you so much for the question, man. Anyways, guys, that has to be it for Sunday with Ola for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you can pre-order the Trug Project Volume 1 album from olanglandshop.com. Also, my beautiful YouTube members, they get a 5 euro uh, discount on the Ultimate Bundle for the Trug Project. The YouTube membership is 5 euros a month, so if you want to try it out, maybe it's a good time to try it out. You at least get that money back when you uh, get the Ultimate Bundle of the Trug Project. You can, you know, feel it a little bit, you know, feel, get a little feel for our Discord and, you know, sit, what it is to sit and talk with me and stuff like that. You, you know, it's a feeler. Go feel it. Next week, I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to be in the premiere for the Sun with Ola. I still have to figure that out, but I'm traveling at that time. I'm uh, gonna be abroad for a couple days. I think I land, like, 
half an hour before the Sunday with Ola premiere or something like that. So we'll just have to see. I, there's going to be a Swola nonetheless. So don't worry about that. It's just if I'm going to be in the premiere or not. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you like what I do, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. You can support by going to oldenglandshop.com. You can pre-order the Chug project. You get this if you get a bundle, okay? The autographed card. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.